Voilà, et j'ai le plaisir d'accueillir euh, Douglas McCarthy, qui euh, va intervenir sur, en anglais, comme c'est précédent le programme, sur une vision globale du libre accès dans le secteur des musées, des bibliothèques et des archives, le Glam Sector. Euh, Nouvelle du Front, vous avez la parole. Merci Bruno. Uh, good morning everybody. First of all, thank you for coming here to listen to us today. And a special thanks to Martin, and Katie and everyone involved in making this event happen. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. So today I'd like to share some information and some early insights into some personal research work that I have been doing uh, with Andrea Wallace since spring this year. And I should say that all of these slides are available on my slide share. I tweeted them out with the Imaz Usage hashtag uh, about an hour ago. So if you prefer to follow the slide deck and look at it and look at the, uh, the survey itself, you can do so during this presentation. So today I will talk about the survey. Um, I will then define open access in relation to the survey, which I think is important. And I'd like to walk you through the, the scope, the method, and the structure of the survey itself. I have some little visualizations um, and also some insights from the survey that we can uh, look at together and discuss, and also share some ideas for the future about how this survey can develop and how you can contribute to it. So this Open Glam survey examines how galleries, libraries, archives, and museums make open access data, whether digital objects, metadata, or text, available for reuse. It's an informal and a crowdsourced initiative. Uh, one of the values, I believe, of this survey that it isn't owned by anyone it doesn't rely on funding or any kind of control. It is very much a community initiative which anyone in the world can contribute to, comment on, and help to develop. It was started in March this year, and it's very much an ongoing and a growing list of open access GLAMs. So in March, we started with about 30, 35 museums on the list. And yesterday, we had 358 until I got back to my hotel room last night, and I saw that the Art Institute of Chicago has just gone open access. So this is out of date. It should be 359. So who are these people behind this strange survey? Well, uh, my colleague on this research work is Andrea Wallace. Um, she is a lecturer in law at the University of Exeter in the UK. And she's a very influential and a well-known voice in the world of open glam. Andrea's research considers how cultural heritage institutes in the public sector navigate the obstacles and the opportunities presented by the digital realm and the impact of technology on the public domain. Andrea is currently completing her PhD in cultural heritage law at the University of Glasgow. And if you don't follow her on Twitter already, Here's her handle. I very much recommend uh, doing that. Um, I am, well, Culture Doug or Douglas McCarthy. Um, I've spent the last 20 years of my life working in uh, the cultural sector, particularly in the, uh, the visual arts. So I've worked at national museums in the UK. I've worked at historical image libraries doing image licensing and copyright management. Um, I've managed digitization programs and prior to joining Europeana three years ago, where I am a collections manager, I spent three years working for a private art collector. So I hope I can say with some confidence that I can see the different sides of this topic and of, of the arguments and discussions around it. So why did Andrea and I start this survey? Well, we identified an information gap um, we perceive that there is a lack of up-to-date and accurate information on this topic. There was also no shared space or place to see and add relevant data. For example, uh, on a Creative Commons wiki, there was a reasonably good list, but a small list of open glams. But to 
comment or edit on that, you had to have, uh, you had to acquire editor access. Um, that requires people behind it to give you those credentials. And the list itself only reflected some of the GLAMs using Creative Commons licenses and didn't look at the other sides of open access licenses, which I will come on to. So we also perceived that in this topic, on this conversation, there is very much a, a European or a Western European and a North American bias in the field. So if you read a lot of the studies to do the literature around open glam, um, there's very much European and a North American focus. And Andrea and I were very keen to dig deeper into the, the global picture, to really work with people to investigate and to discover museums not from that part of the world who have embraced open access. So the survey is one way of uncovering that data. We wanted to develop a resource that makes it easy to find and use open content or data. And we also wanted to create something that GLAM professionals like you can explore, use to explore open access data and policies. They can see in any country, in their own country or continent or around the world, which type of museums and which GLAMs have embraced open access and how they have done that. So we have feedback already that the survey is becoming a, you know, a, a, you know, a policy tool uh, to develop open GLAM. So let's be clear what the definition of open access is for this survey. Andrew and I have adopted the open definition created by Open Knowledge International, which is linked here. And open means anyone can freely access, use, modify, or share for any purpose. Okay, well let's look at some more detail. There are a number of licenses and rights statements which are conformant or apply or eligible for this survey. There is the public domain mark, CC0, CC BY, CC BY SA, no known copyright, which is a rights statement.org rights statement, and equivalence. Important to remember that in many countries and jurisdictions, uh, there are local flavors of these licenses which have a similar meaning, but they have a, a different uh, legal statement and license that they use. So one of the things that the survey does is to recognize those and try to look at equivalents to see if they are eligible for this survey. What is the scope? Well, the survey covers data that GLAMs make available on their own websites, but also external platforms like GitHub, Europeana, the German Digital Library, Wikimedia Commons, Flickr, and, and elsewhere. The survey only covers digital surrogates of objects in the public domain, where any term of copyright for the material object has expired or actually never existed in the first place. So, in copyright, for example, contem more contemporary material is outside the scope of this survey because it is genuinely in copyright. Uh, we are focusing on digital surrogates of things in the public domain. And important to say that only open access data is eligible. So anything with a non-commercial or non-derivative license to it is not included. That is not open access for our purposes. The survey data is published in a comment-only Google Sheet at the moment, and here is a, a link to it. Um, this is a really quick, easy uh, way to manage this information. Uh, so any of you can visit the sheet. You can make suggestions by commenting on it, or you can ping Andrea and I on Twitter and say, hey, my museum is missing, or this, is this right? You can suggest corrections, and this sheet is updated most days, certainly every week. So until this point, Andrew and I have been gathering information through the excellent Open Glam community, and many people in that are here in the audience today. We've also reached out to committed Wikipedians, culture ministries, uh, library and archive associations all around the world. But this is a work in progress. It takes time for people to gather this information, respond, and 
and uh, provide us with it. So it's very early days. We have only been doing this for six months and we anticipate that this will grow, uh, continue to grow in the future. So let's have a quick look at the structure of the survey. Beginning from the basics, um, the sheet is organized A to Z by country. So here we have a, a crop uh, where we begin with Argentina. Then we list the institution names in the second column. And if the institution has a Wikidata entity, then you can see that those are listed as well. And I will come back to Wikidata. The survey also includes the homepage or the base URL for the institution for reference. The sheet has a column called open access scope, which is quite critical to think about and to understand. Um, this is, gives two options. The GLAM makes their open data, uh, some of it that is eligible open access, or all of it. What we quite of, often see in the survey that due to a particular project that a GLAM has been involved in, they might release some of their eligible data as open, but if you visit their website or look at their other collections, you can see it's rights reserved, it's not open. However, we felt it was worthwhile recognizing and important to see where GLAMs have released at least something open rather than everything. So this open access scope column gives you that, uh, that detail. We then list the specific rights statements or the licenses uh, which the GLAM is using. And as I mentioned, if they're using a, uh, like a non-creative commons or a non-right statement, uh, a more local bespoke uh, license, then we map across to the closest equivalent that we, that we know of. The survey also covers the metadata terms of use. So how many of the GLAMs in this sheet have specific terms of use and a license or a right statement to do with metadata? Well, not actually, not so many. And importantly, we link to the terms of use or the, uh, the online policy um, that the GLAM has provided or the, the best equivalent because sometimes there isn't really one place to go that tells you what you need. We will come back to this. The survey also covers, finally, um, data resources. So is there a GitHub? If there is, it's on the sheet. Does the GLAM provide an API or an API via a provider or an aggregator like Europeana? And are there other data sources which are relevant? For example, Wikimedia Commons, they are listed here. So that's the anatomy of the survey at the moment. I made a couple of quick visualizations. Um, one of the strengths of having this information in Google Sheets is that it's very easy to use the explore button and to make your own maps, graphs, charts. You can go crazy with this stuff. Um, at, the, at the moment, we have uh, this slide which shows the, the, the global coverage of GLAMs around the world that are in the survey. And you can see from a pale green to a darker green of hot spots by country. And of course, you can make this more local or more regional to where you are. So for example, we have Latin America on the left and the European picture on the right-hand side. Again, in the sheet, any of you can do this today. You can make any mapping that you want to, any graph, and uh, for your own benefit and sharing. Open access scope, this is a high-level overview that shows you there is roughly a 50-50 split in the survey between GLAMs that make all of their eligible data open access and others that make some of their data open access. Here is an overview of the license types that are in use by open GLAMs. Uh, you can see that public domain is the well, is dominating. Then there is CC0, CC BY, and CC BY SA with a small percentage of other right statements and licenses. A few stats um, of the GLAMs in the survey. Uh, 286 have a stated license for their metadata. 64 of them lack a Wikidata entity, so that's something I think we can quickly work to uh, fix, improve. 42 GLAMs have GitHubs where they provide data and resources, and uh, about 200 have data accessible via Europeana, and about 16 through the German Digital Library and their APIs. 
one of the research topics which is of interest, I think, to us in this field is uh, policy versus practice. So uh, I mentioned that the survey links to GLAM's online policies, but quite often we have discovered that what they say they do about uh, public domain material and digital material is very generic, it lacks details. Uh, sometimes their policy statements, their terms of use, completely conflict with what they actually do elsewhere on their own site or on other websites. And so this is a real uh, piece of room for improvement, we would say. Uh, recommended reading on this particular topic, and she was mentioned yesterday, is um, Ellie, L. Kelly Fitzpatrick, who's at Harvard at the moment, and her writing on communicating uh, use and reuse online. Where are we going next? Well, we will continue to grow the survey with a global outreach, and if anyone in the room sees a gap, something you know about, then please get in touch, make a comment. We are working on modeling and mapping the survey data into Wikidata, so that you can really do some uh, detailed queries on this topic. And if you'd like to get involved, please join the survey at this bit.ly link, and contact Andrea and I, we'd be really happy to hear from you. Merci.